Hi and welcome back. So thanks to all of you that have been watching my videos and subscribed. We're getting close to 400 uh, subscribers now. So, you know, small in YouTube terms, but it's great to know that those of you are interested in watching. This is going to be the first uh, of a number of videos where I dive into what we're doing on the home automation of our build. And um, particularly in this video around first fix and we're starting to do some of the second fix. So we've, um, the house is sort of half finished. We've moved back in from the caravan. We've got a number of view rooms that uh, are occupiable, but you can see from the one I'm in at the moment, some of it is very much still in the first fix phase. And uh, I covered on a previous video why we've chosen Loxon as our home automation platform. Um, I used X10 and uh, Z-Wave with Fabaro and a little bit of Zigbee and other technologies previously. And they're, they're great if you just want to play with some of those technologies. You can stick modules um, behind a light switch to take control of existing lighting circuits. But I wanted something that was built into the house and, and had that functionality that just, just worked and wasn't a hobby, but you could, you could play with it on top. You could do fancier things around the basic um, operation. Now, obviously, there are a number of technologies out there on the market. You could, you could go with specialists for certain areas like Lutron or Creston for lighting. Um, there are platforms like Control4 or KNX. Um, but I went with the Loxon platform, but looked at that with one mind of what would happen if they were to stop trading in the future um, so that we would have an option of replacing the modules, not obviously at some expense, um, but that we weren't wiring the house in too much of a proprietary way. So I think the way that you wire a home for uh, home automation has, has changed a bit. You know, there's an awful lot more can be done wirelessly these days. In our previous house, I put Cat5 into every room. I'm putting Cat6 into this house, but not flood wiring it. You know, so Cat6, got a couple of points here behind the TV. Um, I'm putting that in now for wireless access points, POE cameras, where I might have TD devices. I'm gonna have a, a wall-mounted iPad for control of the house, which will get power over POE. So certainly some Cat6, but not flood wiring. We're not huge movie fans here, so we're not doing lots and lots of, of AV. I think if you were doing that, Control 4 is maybe a better platform than, than Loxon. So we'll have a large TV in, in the room here, a digital audio setup from Meridian in the lounge, and uh, whole house audio with speakers built into the ceilings of most of the rooms, which uh, initially, I'm going to run with Loxon, so I've gone with the Loxon audio server, again installed in such a way that I could change that for a platform like Sonos that we had previously. I think Sonos is probably technically sound-wise and functionality for music a superior system, but it doesn't have the integration with, with the Loxon system. So I'm going with Loxon initially, but you know there's an option to change that out later on. So what have we done with wiring around the house? So I've put a, uh, a data cabinet in the garage, because that's where a lot of the hardware is for things like solar, battery, other technologies. We'll have a look at that shortly. And then around the house, because of the way that Loxon works, we're putting controllers in a central location and everything is wired back to that. So it's not the way a traditional house would be wired where you'd have a uh, lighting radial that went around the rooms and then lines coming down to a power switch on the wall. All of the switches, uh, or pretty much all of the switches are replaced by a Loxon switch. I'm using their Touch Pure switches, which are a nice glass finished switch, which can control lighting scenes in the room, blind control, and the audio control of that platform as well. Um, Loxon do their own cable called Tree Cable, um, and that has a data bus and a higher uh, diameter power cable if you're going to be powering lots of DC Loxon controlled lighting. So we decided against that. They've got some really nice RGBW LEDs, but I found they weren't very bright and I was gonna need a lot of them. So we've, we've decided to go with mains dimmable and some 24 volt uh, LEDs in our installation. So rather than using that Loxon cable, we've wired with KNX and I've put uh, KNX uh, cabling around the house in a couple of loops that will go back to the Loxon cabinet. And that can connect to switches, present sensors, um, a variety of, of different Loxon uh, devices um, and I can also use that to go to a traditional switch so in the garage I'm just going to have probably momentary switches to turn lights on and off to get the garage door to open and close. The mains uh, sockets for power we've done in a traditional way back to breakers in, in the uh, consuming in the garage 
and then I've put a bit of coax in. So for the TV we've got here, power for the TV, two lots of coax just in case I need them, uh, two lots of Cat6. Um, I may well add some more Cat6 because the Meridian audio installation that I'm looking at can take advantage of, of Cat6 cable, not for Ethernet, but to send um, signals over that cable for the speakers. So still looking at how I might wire that one up. So we'll take a tour around now and look at some of the different elements of the installation that we've put. If you weren't doing a locks on system, you know, some of my experience from what I've done in the past, if I was going to be doing any rewiring in a house and looking at using those other modules that can go behind a light switch. And even for the things that I'm doing would be fit a deeper back box behind all your light switches. So there's room for a module, uh, run a neutral because that's going to give you a uh, bigger choice of devices that you can use. There are some devices, those modules that, that will work without any sort of light switch, but uh, many of them do need that. So in, in the UK, we don't often have our light switches wired that way. Uh, certainly in older properties. And for the uh, the Cat6, obviously we're in, a, we're in a bungalow here, so other than this big open plan space that we've got here at a vaulted ceiling, it's relatively easy for us to add uh, additional cabling later on, certainly for ceiling mounted devices like access points or presence sensors, a um, little bit more difficult if you've got to chase a wall once you had the plastering done, but still you know, not impossible to do that. So let's take a look around the house at some of the different parts of the installation. All right, so this is where we're going to put the locks on cabinet. That's going to go in a future automation, I think probably a five layer cabinet. So I'm working with a locks on installer, Thames Valley Automation. So Hugh there is ex locks on. So he's doing all of the system design for me. He's going to build the, the panel off site. I'll put a, a diagram up of the current draft design for that in a moment. Uh, he'll bring that to site and help with the uh, second fix. So I plan to fit all of the switches and motion sensors and things beforehand and test those. Uh, Hugh will come along and do the final connections. So I said that you know when we wire this up, everything's going to come back to this central point. So rather than having a light switch that controls something, each lighting element, so a group of spotlights or individual light on the ceiling, will come back here. Also coming back here is things like um, electric towel radiators, control for mechanical ventilation, heat recovery, so boosting the ventilation uh, when humidity increases in the bathrooms, um, lighting control and all of those sorts of things. So coming in here, obviously we've got you know, a growing number of um, one mil, one and a half mil and two and a half mils, twin and earth connections. So I've got all these labeled up because there's quite a lot of those in there. Uh, power comes to here from the consumer unit. I've got some of these connected up at the moment because obviously we've got no light switches and we're living in the house. I've just temporarily got eight switches on the wall here so that we can control lighting in, in the house um, temporarily. Um, also coming back here is uh, all of the speaker cabling for the multi-room audio. Um, going with some monitor audio speakers in most of the rooms that will be um, up in the ceiling and as I say controlled by locks on. Um, a few runs of Cat6 cabling here to the mini server, to the audio server. Uh, my BT line comes into this cabinet as well, so the, the router will go here, but I'll have access points elsewhere. Um, there's just one of these uh, KNX cables here. At the moment, there'll be four of these, so the two loops around the house. Some of those are still up in the roof space at the moment. Um, and the other thing that we've got is uh, electric blinds. So I've got flexes here uh, going to all of the window locations and I'll show you in just a moment what we've done there. We haven't finally selected the blinds that we're going to use. I didn't want to go with batteries so they could be 24 volt DC or they could be AC controlled. Um, we're hoping to do that using RTS so a Somphy wireless blind using Somphy to Homer and then locks on communicating with that through the API to control our Velux roof lights and the blinds that we have on all the windows. So the panel that we've got in here is going to be pretty much the full width and full height of that cupboard. Uh, we'll have a, a sort of hidden doorway on the uh, front of this um, cabinet. It's not really deep enough to be a full sort of no zero comms cabinet, but certainly big enough for all of the locks on panel to, uh, to go in there. Now I mentioned those electric blinds that we're, we're looking in. So this is one of the windows that hasn't been plastered yet. So what we've put is a, a back box uh, into the wall that flex that you saw in the locks on cabinet goes all the way back to that back box and then we've buried conduit inside the wall to a small tube just to come out behind where the blind will be mounted in the window. Um, where I've finished these windows elsewhere, um, I've put a piece of plywood up into the ceiling so we've got good fixings for the roller blind to go into. Using the Beadmaster plastic covers 
before the plaster goes onto the wall. So the rooms that have had this uh, all plastered, you can't actually see this at the moment. So if we decide to use powered blinds, which I think we will, I can just cut through that um, small piece of plaster, open up the box. We can put Wago connectors or whatever's appropriate to connect in here and then have a, fat, a flat faceplate across that. Um, so we're, we're looking at what we'll do with that wiring. Hopefully that gives us choices because we've got a four core flex there so actually we could use locks on relays and a 240 volt blind um, depending on on what the prices come out looking at that there's, there's a choice to be made there if i go with relays we need a lot of relays um, in the locks on cabinet if i go with this somfy rts protocol it's another controller box with an api interface that um, you know the risk there is as software updates and things change over time that that, that connection could could break or, or need um, modification with software updates. So let's go and have a look in uh, the garage where we've got all of the solar consumer unit and those sorts of technologies installed. So let's have a look in the garage where some of that heavier technology has been installed. So we've got solar panels on the roof. I've got 12 400 watt panels on east-west configuration. Um, that went in November. Um, so we haven't had a huge amount of generation from it yet, but I have hit in the last few days two and a half kilowatts at times, you know, so for a um, an early March as it was when we were hitting that, quite happy with that sort of production. Um, that links through to a 13 and a half kilowatt battery. At the moment I'm charging that on an octopus rate of seven and a half pence at night, which we get till about 5.30 in the morning. Um, then it's running the air source heat pump um, and all of the other things that we've got in the house. And when we're not here doing lots of uh, laundry for our holiday business, uh, that's taking us through most of the day. So even in the you know, slightly warmer part of winter that we have now, we're running for most of the time on seven and a half pence of electricity rather than uh, the sort of 28, 30 pence that, that we would be if we were on the peak tariff. So the uh, Give Energy battery here, 13 and a half kilowatts, connects to the uh, Give Energy gateway. So the gateway effectively makes this like a whole house UPS. So if the power fails outside and I still have battery capacity, this can give us six kilowatts of power. So, you know, 13 and a half kilowatt battery, two hours or more, even at six kilowatts. So the ability to run the house uh, for quite a long period of time. It doesn't power heavy uh, power using devices such as charging the car. So those would be disconnected if we lost power. Um, also in here we've got a big Hager consumer unit with enough breakers for all the different sorts of technology that we're putting in. So we've got a few of those circuits connected at the moment, but there's a number, half a dozen or more yet, that we need to add in to complete that installation over the coming weeks. Also in here is the hot water tank for the Daikin air source heat pump and its controller. So I've got the standard Daikin controller at the moment, but we'll be installing a, a Modbus interface that you may have seen on the Loxon diagram I showed earlier um, to allow locks on to have full visibility of the air source heat pump and take control of it. So I'll be able to see all of the flow rates, the pressures, temperatures, um, and my understanding is be able to adjust the weather compensation curve and optimize the way that's working with our underfloor heating. One of the things I do like about that, that we're controlling this with mod buses, if we do need to do any diagnostics, we can effectively break that link, if you like, um, and just control things from the Daikin controller. So if I have a heating engineer turns up and um, isn't happy about locks on, we, we can break that link for the diagnostics. Um, finally, on the installation here in the garage is the networking. I said we haven't flood wired the house with networking. I've got a 24 port patch panel here. Um, my son did a great job a few weeks ago of installing those. We've got a really nice patch panel, which allows you to fit modular Cat6 and, and other connectors like you know, USB and HDMI which allows us to move those around should we add a cable and say you know we want all the PoE cameras in one end to keep it neat and tidy we can adjust that later on. I went for a small cabinet to make it look neat on the, the wall here but I found some of the devices I was considering things like the Ubiquiti um, USG Pro are deeper than can go in that cabinet so that, that may mean that I need to change the cabinet later um, for a deeper one. If I do, the great thing about that patch panel is all of those connectors can just come off the back of the panel, loop out the back, so I'm not having to re-terminate everything um, just through changing the cabinet. So I hope that's given you a view of where we are on, on the first fix uh, for the Loxon installation that we're putting in here. Um, I haven't really shown many of the uh, the K and X cables for the tree data, but those are all up in the ceiling, looping to all of the sensor locations and those sorts of things. Um, 
uh, as we finish second fix, I'll go around and give a better view of some of those technologies. But I'm hoping that's given you a view of how we're wiring for locks on. Hopefully not forgetting any cables. Obviously that's less of an issue in a bungalow because we can put things through in the ceiling for most of the property. But we're wiring that locks on panel in such a way that we can add and change and do small tweaks that we might need to over time. So love feedback from any of you. Thanks again to all of you that are watching these videos. I'll do a series of these as we go through the build for locks on and the home automation um, and the other things that we're going to be integrating with. Love your questions and any comments and feedback. Thank you very much.